The artist and filmmaker Sky Hapinka was awarded the prestigious MacArthur Genius Award last fall, celebrating a decade of his experimental work focused on indigenous people. Jeffrey Brown met with Hopinka in New York's Hudson Valley for our final story in our series on contemporary Native American arts. It's part of our arts and culture series, Canvas. I was here last month and it was all water. A young Native woman soon to give birth, having survived rough years, speaking in English with Chinook subtitles. Nagashati Uguk, Kaba Vincent. A young man immersing himself in his native language and customs. He speaks in Chinook with English subtitles. Both exploring the beauty, history, and mythology of the Pacific Northwest. The 2020 documentary Mothmi Towards the Ocean, Towards the Shore is lyrical in form, circling around its themes a meditation on a Chinookan myth of death and rebirth. It's also a love letter to the natural world. It's the first feature by filmmaker and photographer Sky Hopinka. There's something about shooting, you know, the Oregon coast in the winter when it's gray and rainy and cloudy and the trees are a special kind of green and the dirt is a special red of hue that I just really love and I just really want to express that visually and then that works in tandem with just like the high-minded ideas about language and about decolonization and about these different ideas of myth. The 38-year-old who now teaches at Bard College in New York's Hudson Valley grew up between Washington State and California, the son of casino workers. His father, a member of the Ho-Chunk tribe from Wisconsin, and his mother, a member of the Pechunga band of Luiseno Indians from Southern California. My family would go to Powell's, and my mom was a dancer, and my dad was a drummer, and that's how they met, was on the Powell Trail. And so it was something that I grew up with. Um, I grew up close but adjacent to a reservation, and, but it wasn't my own reservation. There's a, a lot of feeling a part of a community, separate from a community, and also trying to locate myself in the landscape, but also amongst my family. You grow up knowing you're Native, of course, knowing that this is part of your culture, but did you feel it defined you? Yeah, I mean, it definitely defined me. I mean, how could it not? You know, it's like you're, you're brown and you, you're a kid and you're li living in a small white farming community, you know? Like, of course it defines you, you know? No one would ever let me forget that I'm Native. Hopinka was in his late 20s when he decided to pursue experimental film as a way to explore that identity. I was thinking about Native American film and wanting to see my life and my experience reflected in these films and in ways that I hadn't. And so like, if I want to see myself, my experience represented in film, then why not make it myself? His work can take on current events, as in Dislocation Blues, a film Hopinka shot while at the Standing Rock protests in 2016 and 17. Always, your G is silent there, because that's the way it's pronounced though. I used to hear, I don't know, Papa talked Spanish, Mama talked Indian, she talked Indian, he talked Spanish, we talked English, and there were three languages spoken in the house. But more often, personal histories are explored. 2021's Kicking the Clouds is both a language lesson and family history. The film centers around old audio cassette tapes of his grandmother. My grandma passed away some 15, 16 years ago, and we were really close, and I had never heard her voice that young before. And so that was really striking. And here she was in like 1971, 72, trying to get her mom to teach her Lisenio, to teach her Pachanga, um, because she never did. And my great grandma was resistant because she went to the boarding schools in Southern California and was taught to not to want to speak her language, to be ashamed of she it. She could be punished for it. Yeah, so you could hear that tension in some of the back and forth and some of the exchanges, but you can also like hear their joy. <laughs> These films are rooted in what he calls native people doing native things. But as they define it, even the boring, banal stuff of everyday life, 
far from the spectacle of trauma so familiar in Hollywood films. And it's important for that to exist, but it's also important for these other parts of me, of a community to exist that are not based on the definitions of our trauma or how an audience outside of us looks at us, how the white Western world looks at us. And so what does it mean to pick up a camera and point the things at that I want to point it at that are interesting to me but might be boring to anyone else? Hopinka, also an accomplished photographer, wants his work to broaden popular ideas of both native life and visual storytelling. Like on one hand, they're for everybody. And on another hand, they're for me, my family, my community, my tribe. I want people to watch these films. Um, because like, I, I, mean, I want them to be part of a larger conversation of like, then what comes next? You know, what does the next generation of indigenous experimental filmmakers look like? Hopinka says the recognition and funds from the MacArthur Fellowship can help him support those future efforts. In the meantime, he's at work on two new feature films and has an upcoming gallery exhibition of his photography and videos. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown in New York's Hudson Valley.